everyone, and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video, we're going to start exploring the idea of solving quadratic equations. And that is a topic that is probably the primary topic of this entire chapter and playlist of videos on quadratics. Uh, there's going to be a variety of techniques and strategies to do that. And we're going to begin that process in this video by using graphing and square roots to solve quadratic equations. Okay, before we start talking about solving quadratic equations, we're gonna look at a, a larger problem, uh, which is finding zeros of a function, or in this case, of a quadratic function. So let's go ahead and go over real quick what the definition of a zero is, and then we're gonna get into finding them and having that lead us uh, to solving quadratic equations. Okay, so when we are talking about the zeros of a quadratic function, very simply, we're only interested in the places where the graph is going to cross the x-axis. Uh, you can call those uh, zeros. You can call those x-intercepts. You can call them roots. And if we replace the function notation with a, an, an equation, a related equation, we can also call those solutions to an equation. And so we're gonna primarily talk about solving equations, finding solutions to an equation, but really at the heart of that problem, uh, what we're really doing is we're finding zeros of the function that is related to this equation. Okay, we wanna find the zeros of this quadratic function. Uh, zeros, again, are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So you might think to yourself, um, a good way to solve this would be to graph it so we can see where it crosses the x-axis. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this quadratic function has a vertex at 5, negative 9. It's got a scale factor of 1. It's going to open up. So we're going 1, 1. We're going 2, up 4. And then we're going 3 from the vertex, up 9. And that's enough points, and we've actually hit the x-axis too, which is what we are interested in. So the graph of this function, the shape of this parabola looks like that. And our zeros are where we have hit the x-axis. So our zeros are at x equals 2 and x equals 8. Next one has the same directions. We just want to find the zeros of this function. Right here, it has a vertex of negative seven, positive eight. So here's negative seven up eight. It's gonna open down with the negative and it's gonna be stretched times two. Uh, so like two times as tall in the vertical direction, opening down. So here we go. One is gonna go to two. And then two is gonna to square to four, but then double to eight. And you can see we've already hit the x-axis, so I'm happy to stop plotting points right there. And our zeros are these locations where we have hit the x-axis. So our zeros are x equals negative 9 and x equals negative 5. So finding zeros of a, a quadratic function, or any function in general, it's doable by graphing. Um, but graphing may not be the, the easiest or best technique to find zeros. For example, um, graphing can be a slow process. You have to, one, have graph paper. If you don't have graph paper or grid paper, drawing graphs by hand on notebook paper can be uh, very tedious will slow you down. Uh, it can also be pretty inaccurate. Um, now the two examples that I did, uh, I made those specifically to work really nice. Uh, when I drew those graphs, they were scaled in such a way and they were placed on the graph in such a manner that points that we were counting out landed right on the x-axis and that made it easy to determine those zeros. 
but if I don't cross the x-axis at an integer, it can be very difficult to determine what those zeros actually are. So, you know, graphing has its pros and cons. I, I think the main advantage to graphing is you can physically see your function. You can see what you're looking at. Um, and then the rest of it is just, I think those are our cons right there. Now, there are four algebraic techniques that we are going to go over. We're not going to go over all of these in this video. We're going to take each of these as its own separate video. Um, the subject of this one, besides kind of what zeros are and doing them by graphing, uh, the rest of this video is going to be using square root technique. Uh, we will also look at in subsequent videos, factoring, completing the square and quadratic formula. Uh, but for now, we're just going to worry about the square roots. Okay, directions here are to find the zeros of the quadratic function. Uh, if you look closely, this is the exact same problem that we just did on the graph. The last graph that we did, this is the problem. So I want to show you how we can get those exact same answers, but doing it algebraically instead of on a graph. Now, when we are finding zeros, places where we are crossing the x-axis, um, well, when we cross the x-axis, zeros occur at coordinate points x comma zero. In other words, the y value is zero. So to find zeros of a function, what we do is we replace the f of x, which is the y value, we're going to replace the f of x with zero. And when I do that, I've effectively I've turned this problem from a function whose zeros we're trying to find to an equation whose solutions we are trying to find. Uh, but they're kind of one in the same thing. So uh, how do I go about solving this? Uh, well, you might prefer, maybe before we get started, you might prefer, uh, most of you probably will because you've probably seen it that way, to take this equal to zero and just throw it on the other side. So let's just go ahead and rewrite that to kind of a more common presentation for you. Okay, so we're starting there. Uh, I need to solve this for x. So the idea using square root method is I'm gonna solve for the x squared part first. So I'm gonna take this eight, I'm gonna subtract it over to this side, giving me negative two times quantity x plus seven squared equals negative eight. I'm gonna divide both sides by negative two. That's gonna give me the quantity x plus seven squared equals four. Now at this point, I've got the x squared by itself or the quantity squared by itself. Now I'm gonna get rid of the square. And so what I'm gonna to do to both sides is I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. That's gonna cancel that out and I'm gonna be left with x plus seven equals the square root of four is two, uh, but since negative two squared is also four and we don't know which we want, we're gonna call it plus or minus two, okay? Now, all that's left to do is to finish this, but I am running out of room, so I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna recopy this down and finish over here. So I've got x plus seven equals plus or minus two. To finish this for, for x, I just have to subtract seven from both sides. And we get x equals negative seven plus or minus two. And I'm just gonna work out the plus and minus. Negative seven plus two is negative five, and negative seven minus two is negative nine. And there we've got solutions to the equation. They're the exact same solutions we got when we did it by graphing, but we didn't have to worry about uh, doing the graph, we're able to do it algebraically instead. Okay, the rest of these problems, I'm just gonna start them as equations. So I'm not gonna worry about uh, beginning with functions and finding zeros of functions. We're just gonna find solutions to the equations. So here I've got three x squared minus 75 equals zero. I'm gonna begin by adding this 75 over to that side, giving me 
3x squared equals 75. Next, I will divide both sides by 3. Gives me x squared equals 25. And now, here comes the name of our technique is square root method. We're going to take the square root of both sides. Square root cancels the square, and we get x equals positive or negative 5. Okay, next one is a very similar looking problem. Uh, we're going to kind of do the same first two steps to get started. I'm going to move this 120 over to that side. So that'll give me 5x squared equals 120. We're going to divide both sides by 5, giving me x squared equals 24. And then we're going to take the square root to get rid of that square. And so we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 24. Now, a little algebra alert here ahead of us. Uh, that is not a perfect square. Uh, so we have to now simplify, uh, simplify the square root. Now, that is a topic in and of itself that needs its own kind of separate video. I'm assuming if you're this far, you've probably seen how to do this before. Uh, if you're unsure, I do have a, a short little math minute video that can help you uh, where I'll kind of go over uh, exactly how this is done. Uh, but we'll just do this real quick here. Uh, 24 is four times six and four is a perfect square. So this is gonna become x equals plus or minus Square root of the 4 becomes 2, and then we have the 6 left over. This is an example of a problem that, had you been trying to solve this by graphing, uh, you would have had some difficulty getting those answers because those are irrational numbers, they're not integers. Uh, finding where it crosses the x-axis would have been quite difficult there. Uh, so the algebraic technique in square roots is the preferred method. All right, next problem. I'm going to begin this by moving the 36 over to that side. It gives me x minus 4 quantity squared equals 36. Now, this has a squared exponent just like the other couple of problems that we've done. And so I'm going to deal with this the same way. I'm going to take a square root and it will cancel that square. Take a square root to this side as well. So that gives me x minus 4 equals positive or negative 6. And then I just have to move this 4 over to this side by adding it. So I'm going to get x equals 4 plus or minus 6. Now, I don't want to leave my answer looking like this when I've got like terms here that can be added together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, if I do 4 plus 6, we get 10. And if I do 4 minus 6, we get negative 2. And so it's good to go ahead and split those up and get two unique answers. Okay, our next problem looks very similar to the last one, and we're going to begin it the same way. I'm going to take this 18. I'm going to add it over to the opposite side. So I have 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared equals 18. Uh, the difference in this problem, though, is I'm not ready to take a square root because I have this 2 in front, which is not a perfect square like the x plus 3 is. So instead, I'm going to divide the 2 off. So x plus 3 squared equals 18 divided by 2 makes 9. Now the square is by itself. Now I'm going to take the square root to cancel it. Do it to both sides. So that gives me x plus 3 equals plus or minus 3. And then I'll take this 3 and subtract it over to that side. So I'll have x equals negative 3 plus or minus 3. And so I get x equals uh, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And x equals negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. 
Okay, a couple more problems. I want to finish with some that are not perfect squares under the square root when we're simplifying, just so we have that uh, practice of simplifying square roots. Uh, same steps though. We're gonna bring this 200 over to that side. So I've got four times the quantity x plus 11 squared equals 200. We'll divide everything by four. So we get x plus 11 squared equals 50. Now that the square is by itself, we can take a square root of both sides. So that gives us x plus 11 equals plus or minus. Uh, now I have the square root of 50, so let's think about 50. 50 is 25 times two. And so if I had square roots of these, the 25 is a perfect square, so it becomes five, and I leave the square root of two left over like that. And now all it's left to do is to take this 11 and subtract it over to this side, and I'm just gonna slip it right in front of this plus minus sign. So I get x equals negative 11 plus or minus five square root of two. Now, because those are not necessarily like terms. I can't add 11 to the square root of two term. I'm gonna leave them combined with the plus and minus just as kind of one number. At least it looks like one number. It's two numbers because there's plus and minus. But we're just gonna go ahead and leave it like that. And it's pretty standard. Okay, last example problem. Could be a good idea to go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own and then just fast forward and watch uh, the to the end. Uh, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um, no matter how you're viewing the video. I'll start by moving the 135 to that side. So I've got negative three times quantity x minus eight squared equals negative 135. I'll divide by negative three, which will give me quantity x minus eight squared equals, and negative 135 divided by negative three is positive 45. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get rid of that square. So I've got x minus 8 equals plus or minus. Now let's think about 45. 45 is 9 times 5. And 9 is a perfect square. So that's going to become 3 square root of 5. Now I'm just gonna take this minus eight, and I'm gonna add it over to this side. I'll slip it right in front of that plus minus is where you're gonna see it. I got x equals eight plus or minus three square root of five. All right, that's all I've got for, for this uh, video tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, I wanna thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. And as always, I hope to see you in the next one.